Knowing how to debug applications is an essential skill for any Java developer. So in this video, you'll learn the best techniques to debug Java applications in IntelliJ IDEA using an example application built just for this tutorial, which you can try out yourself afterwards. So whether you're just getting started with Java, you're new to IntelliJ IDEA, or you want to brush up on your debug skills, you're very welcome here. Let's get right into it. So why do we need debugging in the first place? Well, sometimes during execution of your application, it behaves in a way that wasn't intended. Sometimes we know why this was, but other times it's not quite so clear. To understand what's going on inside of our application, that's when we use the technique called debugging. It's a way of looking inside your application to see what's going on inside the code, what values the variables have, hopefully to try to diagnose your problem and come up with a solution. The way it works in Java is that when your application starts up in the Java Virtual Machine, the JVM, you can start it up in a way that's called debug mode. This allows another process to attach itself to the JVM and see what's happening inside, as you'll see shortly. This is useful to not only diagnose issues that are running inside your IDE, or in other words, during development, but it can also be used after deployment. Even if your application is running in the cloud, for example, you can still attach a debug session to it. In this video, we'll be focusing on the first scenario where we've got an application running inside IntelliJ IDEA, and we're going to use all the tools that IntelliJ IDEA offers to make it as simple as possible for us to debug this application. In my spare time, I've been building this battleship game in Java. If you're not familiar with this game, it's quite straightforward. There is a 10 by 10 grid which represents the ocean, and somewhere on that ocean is a battleship. In my case, that is a battleship of length 3. So that could be 3 squares in the x direction horizontally, or 3 squares in the y direction vertically. Somewhere on that grid, the battleship exists, and it's the player's job to launch bombs to one grid point at a time to try to target the battleship. Since the battleship has length three, if the player makes three direct hits, that is a success. But the player only has 50 turns, and if they don't succeed, they lose the game. And in my implementation, the player is completely automated, so we'll just see a simulation of this battleship game playing out. Everybody comes across problems during development. Nobody ever writes code perfect the first time. And that's certainly true during the development of this application. And I've got three bugs that I really like to fix. And we're going to explore debug techniques to try to solve these bugs. We're going to run through quite a few different features of the Java debugging in IntelliJ IDEA. But you can jump around to the right location using the chapters below. First things first though, let's have a look at how this works. In my code, I've got three classes, Battleship Game, Board, and Player. The main entry point is the Battleship Game, which has a public static void main method. It creates a new Battleship Game. It sets up a 10x10 board with a battleship in a random location, either horizontally or vertically. And then it simulates the player playing the game. They get up to 50 turns. And then at the end, the grid is revealed with the location of the battleship. So let's run this method. And here we can see setting up game, commence bombardment, and then we've got the player taking his turns. These numbers represent the X and Y coordinates of the attack. So here, turn 14, we've got a direct hit. And then no more direct hits, the ship survived. And here the X's reveal the location of the ship. Let's run this a few more times and we're going to come across the first bug. See if you can spot it, bearing in mind that the battleship can be in a horizontal or vertical orientation. It's clear to me that the ship is always in a horizontal direction. That's the first bug, so let's use debug techniques to try to fix this. The first concept to introduce you to is the breakpoint. This represents a statement or line of your code on which you want to halt execution of your application. That means you can choose a specific line, and when the execution gets to that line, 
your whole application is going to freeze and you're going to have the ability to see what's happening inside your application at that point in time. And nothing else will happen in your application until you say so. And we set a breakpoint in IntelliJ IDEA by clicking on the left hand side here, which is called the gutter. And we're going to set one on setup board line 10, which I believe is probably the method where the problem lies. Now that we've set up a breakpoint, we need to execute the application in debug mode. There's a few ways to do that. You can right click the main method and hit debug here. You can hit debug at the top here next to the run configuration. And you can even do a shift F9 for debug as well. So let's hit this icon here. It's going to run our application in the special debug mode. And now something special has happened. This blue line indicates that the execution has paused on line 10 at our breakpoint. Perfect. And down below here, we've got information about things like variables. We can see the battleship game variable. We can double click and even see what's inside this object. We currently have a null board because we haven't called setup board yet. On the left here is what's called the stack. It's a list of all the methods we've called. And as we go deeper into the code, you'll see methods added to the stack. That's a nice way to see where you are in the code and where you've come from. Also within this view, you can click to see the console to see the console output. So what we want to do now is step into the code. We want to go into the setup board method. And the way we do that is with this button here, it's called step into. You can also use F7. And when we press this button, we're going to go into the method on the current execution point, the blue line. Now we're inside setup board. We're on the system out print LN. We can use another button here, step over. So we don't want to go into the print LN method. Instead, we want to step over. If we click on the console now, we've got the text setting up game that it's just printed out. And we want to step into this new board method. Step over, step over. And this is the add battleship method where I think we'll find the problem to do with the orientation. Let's step into that. So we've got a start point equals random grid point. It's choosing a random location on the grid. Let's step over. We can see our start point. Let's double click. And it's going to calculate an endpoint. Let's step into that. And here we have a switch statement. And the idea is that it generates a random integer, either 0 or 1. And based on that integer, it either generates a horizontal endpoint or it generates a vertical endpoint. Let's step into this get random integer and see whether that's working properly. So one thing that we can do inside this method is select the code here. And we can actually execute the code that we have selected using this evaluate expression calculator icon. And we can click evaluate. And again, and again, and again, and again. And it's always returning zero. So the idea was that this would either return zero or one, but it's actually returning zero all the time. Now, new random dot next int is what's called exclusive. It won't give you an integer which equals the value that you pass to it. It will always give you one that's less than that value. So we actually need to add one to this. If we add one, we get a random zero or one. So that's the solution here. If you're not familiar with the random class, don't worry too much. What's more important is how we're debugging this. And before we make a code fix, I just want to show you a couple more things. And one of them is called step out. So just like we stepped into the method earlier, we have a step out button, which will take us one level up the stack. So on the left here, you see we're in the get random integer method. If we want to go to calculate endpoint, we click step out. If we want to go to add battleship, step out. If we want to go to the constructor, step out, set up board, step out, main method, step out. And here we are back where we started. So you've seen how to step into, step over and step out. 
Now at this point, we can either stop execution with this red button here, or we can resume, which continues execution until the application exits, or we hit another breakpoint. So let's hit that. And while we're here, we'll clear this breakpoint by clicking the red circle. So back in board, let's fix the get random integer method by adding a one here. Now I'm going to execute the application a few times, not in debug mode, just in normal mode, to see that this is now working. So we've got a horizontal ship. This is an array index out of bounds exception, which we're going to fix shortly. This happens occasionally at the moment. And there we go, we've got a vertical ship now. So that's the first bug solved, great. Bearing in mind what I said earlier about the battleship needing three direct hits to sink it, see if you can spot the next bug. I'm just going to keep running the application a few more times until we get a run where the bug happens. Okay, so this is a run where the bug's happening. On turn 17, we've got a direct hit. On turn 35, we've got a direct hit. And on turn 39, we've got a direct hit. After turn 39, the ship has sunk, but we're still carrying on. And at the end, it says ship survived. So there's obviously a bug here. Let's turn to debugging again to try to solve this one. This time, we'll add a breakpoint to the play method here. And let's hit debug again. Step into, step over, and this is the loop where we go through the number of turns that the player has. While the player has turns left and the ship is not sunk, then keep taking turns. So I reckon there's a problem with the is sunk method here. If we click step into here, we're in the is sunk method, but currently the hit count is zero. What we really want to do is to pause on this line when the hit count is three, to simulate the scenario where this method should return true. What we can do in this case is add a special type of breakpoint called a conditional breakpoint, which will pause execution only under some specific situation that we can configure. In this case, that situation is when the hit count is equal to three. So the way we set that up is initially the same as a normal breakpoint, click in the left hand gutter, and then right click the breakpoint to get to the settings where we can add a condition. And it's as simple as saying hit count equals three. Done. Now we're going to resume execution. And here we are, and you can see it's continued until hit count equals three. So when hit count was one or two, it didn't pause on this breakpoint. And maybe you can spot the problem which is that is sunk is true at the moment, only when hit count is greater than battleship length. Yeah, I think we just need to change this from greater than to greater than or equal to. So let's stop execution and add a fix. And I'm going to run normally until we can see this working properly. Okay, so I actually had to run that quite a few times, more than I would have liked, to be honest. Here we are, we can see Three direct hits, one, two, three, and then that's the game over and it says ship sunk. So we've successfully squashed bug two. Before we get on to bug three, I just want to show you one other feature, which is how you can manage breakpoints from one central location and from the debug window, which you can access in Windows with Alt-5. You can view breakpoints by clicking the red circles, or get to the same option with Control shift f8 and we can see the two breakpoints we added earlier and we can just click them and hit minus to remove. But this is a good place to manage your breakpoints or just clean things up if you're done with debugging some specific area of your code. So now on to the final bug and I think you remember me mentioning the array index out of bounds problem we had earlier. Let's run a few times until we can reproduce the problem. Here we go, and if we click on battleship.main, we see this array index out of bounds. Let's copy the exception, because what we're going to do now is use another type of breakpoint, an exception breakpoint. 
And this is extremely handy to get to the point of execution just before an exception is thrown so you can see what's going on. View the breakpoints and click Add, Java Exception Breakpoint, and paste in Array Index Out of Bounds. That's it, and we'll just debug until we get the exception thrown. And here we are on the line that causes the Array Index Out of Bounds exception. We can see what conditions are going to cause that problem because we've got a grid 10 by 10. It's an array of arrays. And of course, with a Java array, it goes from index 0 to 9. You can see here that the value y is 10, which is going to be out of bounds because the maximum index is 9. The problem is that this code isn't intelligent at this point, and it doesn't check that it's not going outside the boundaries of the 10 by 10 grid. So I'm just going to quickly add some extra code to do that check. So now we've got this do while loop, which is going to calculate a start point and an end point. And we've got this new is within grid method to check whether the end point is within the boundary. So now we should be able to run as many times as we want. And it looks like everything's working and that's the third bug fixed. So you've just seen some powerful techniques for how to debug Java applications in IntelliJ IDEA, which is going to cover the majority of the situations you're going to come across. You now understand how to set up standard breakpoints, conditional breakpoints, and exception breakpoints, and how to start your Java application in debug mode. You know how to inspect variables and see where you are using the stack, as well as stepping into, stepping over, and stepping out of code. And you've also seen how to evaluate expressions and view breakpoints in the breakpoints list. I know that was a lot to take in, but what I recommend you do now is head on over to that GitHub repository linked in the description. And you can download this project, which is set up with these three bugs. And you can try debugging yourself using the techniques from this video. If you've got any other questions about debugging Java applications, just put a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.